around to the side of his vehicle, at which time, when he looked at the side of his vehicle, I watched the exterior glass fall out of his vehicle onto a, the parking lot of the Aeromart, to which case I saw him going to radio uh, for assistance. At that point, I had already placed my vehicle in drive. Uh, I went to go offer support and offer a cover for Deputy Hale, so I put my patrol vehicle in front of him and his vehicle. I didn't know what situation was going on, but he said possible gunshot. Uh, so in my mind, I utilized our training, we utilized our vehicles, uh, made sure Deputy Hale was okay. We utilized the resources we have in the vehicle. We established what we believed to be an origin of a possible shot. Um, just from the minimal amount of time we had to prepare ourselves for such a situation, we radioed for additional assistance. And as Deputy Hale explained, there was patrons throughout the intersection, being a busy, busy intersection around lunchtime. And we verbally cleared people who were also confused on what was going on and why there's police officers with um, you know, our weapons drawn at that point. Just for our safety, we explained to people verbally, to, uh, please stay covered, please get out of the area. We don't know what's going on at this point. Uh, to which we waited for additional units. I remained uh, a cover officer uh, on that window where I believe the threat was we had an individual in the window who was not responding to commands. Whether he couldn't hear me um, or wasn't paying attention to me, I did not know at that point. It just seemed to me like I would draw attention to that window and Deputy Hale and a few of the support officers, which were explained, uh, moved in following and without incident. Uh, yeah. Did you, to clarify, did you, you were able to see a person up in that window at this point? Yes, and that was transmitted to the responding officers. Uh, did you see a weapon? Did he show a weapon at all at that point? or? Did I could not see a weapon from the inside of the window, the darker, a, a darker compartment of the house. I wasn't able to see anything. You could just tell there was an individual one. Oh, there was clearly an individual moving back and forth. Okay. And did um, and it, it was just the one time that he fired. Nothing after that that he uh, attempted another shot. To my understanding, one shot was fired, but I, as he stated, it's a, the investigation is ongoing. And um, you uh, mentioned uh, you had your weapons drawn. Was that your sidearms, or there's um, weapons in the vehicle? Did you? Uh, deploy those, and what are those weapons that you did? Uh, I deployed uh, our long-range weapon, which would be an AR-15, which is the sheriff's officer for training in that situation to uh, deploy, and I utilized that while covering Deputy Hale and waiting for assistance. Just a couple more questions. I don't know who would answer this. Maybe the sheriff. Um, when you guys took the suspect into custody, was there like a struggle, or was it just kind of you guys went up to the room and he came with you guys? Yeah, there was no struggle. He offered no resistance. You know, the officers uh, who took him into custody, uh, he really just went along with him. He, like I said, he made admissions and they placed him under arrest and brought him back to the office. Okay. Sir, anything okay. else? Please. Slugs recovered, and what can you tell us about this weapon? Legal, illegal, what kind of weapon was it? It's a legal uh, 22 uh, bolt action single shot rifle. He had a box of uh, 22 uh, of ammunition on his bed, I'd noticed when I was in the room. And uh, the spent casing was still in the, in the rifle. Uh, at this time, we're not able to, uh, have been able to locate the bullet at this particular time. Are, are you feeling then that there was only one shot fired? Yes. Do you know how long he's been living there? Somebody said about, uh, did you talk to? Uh, I think he's been there for some time. Uh, exactly how long? I think since. Last last year sometime, but I can't tell you exactly how long. Could you just clarify, Jim, you may have said this already, but could he be charged with attempted homicide? Or what would it take for... Well, that's up to the district attorney's office. After they review all the uh, evidence information we have, they'll make that determination. Bill, you went up there. Did you, did you take anything else out of the apartment? I'm sorry? Did you take anything else out of the apartment this, uh, in addition to the gun? There was the gun and the ammunition, and I'm not certain what else they took out. Nobody else was living in there? Not in that particular room. How many law enforcement members were there um, when you guys had the most people on scene? Would you say? Total? Yeah, a dozen? Uh, probably close to a dozen with the 903 state police officers who were there and probably Peter kind of us all together. Has there been anything, any writings in his room, posted online, or anything that you found yet that indicate a hostility towards law enforcement? That's something we still have to follow up on. We haven't gotten into that detail yet. Can you just talk quickly about the dangers of the job and how you never know when something like this could happen? It is a dangerous job, uh, more dangerous than uh, you know when I first started many years ago. And uh, people seem to be more aggressive. I think is a sign of the times. Uh, the drug abuse, uh, alcohol abuse, uh, stress, uh, you know, and uh, 
a lot of people out there with mental health issues. Uh, you know, the shooting we had on Selden Road in uh, Leroy, that person had a lot of mental health history also. Could we hear Deputy Hale kind of respond to that same question? Sure. I mean, now that this has happened and we're a couple hours after this has happened, uh, could we just kind of get your thoughts on that? Well, uh, every morning, obviously, I mean, I know there's a possibility of some harm being done to me. Um, you know, as time goes on, you, you get complacent, you fall in the routine, and you do the same things time and time again, but you try to remind yourself, and it's incidences like this that remind us that you know, we do have to be vigilant out there and have to pay attention, and, you know, a simple traffic ticket for a seatbelt, and look what it turned into. You know, it's not just that easy sometimes. So, you, know, you got to make sure you try to keep yourself sharp, and your job. Your training a lot of time, I mean, focuses on command and control of the person in the vehicle, the person you're interacting with. You don't necessarily expect, you know, some third party type of action like this, right? Oh, That's got to be shocking. You know, as the sheriff stated, you know, policing's changed. You know, nowadays the, the traffic stop has become 360. It's no longer just right in front of you. You have to be more aware of the hostility towards police officers and, you know, people walking down the street. You just, you never know. And I guess that's just part of the job now, so. Did you give the ticket to the guy? <laughs> no, I did not give the guy a ticket. <laughs> <laughs> did he get off? Awesome. <laughs> I would have skedaddled if I was him. But. <laughs> in all actuality, what, what did the, he do? He's in front of your vehicle being pulled over. Mm -hmm. If this happens, is he also looking around like what's going on? He did exit his vehicle, which usually that's a red flag for us as law enforcement. Um, he got out, but he immediately had put his hands in the air, and he asked if I was okay. So uh, I wasn't able to talk to that individual yet, and it's still under investigation, but um, one could only assume that he, he was checking on me to make sure I was okay, or heard some kind of noise and saw the glass, so. At any point, are you suspecting he shot at you? And that was my first initial thought, but you know, somebody who just shoots at you doesn't throw their hands in the air and ask if you're okay, so um, once I, I kind of, asserted that he wasn't the threat, you know, my, my eyes started going elsewhere. But as I said, there's houses all over, it's a residential area. There's really no telling where that, you know, initially where that shot had come from until... That, that's got to be a really stressful moment. You don't know where the shot comes. You, you need to exit your vehicle to be able to see what's going on, but you don't know where you need to take cover. Yeah, exactly. Where do I hide and where do I go? That's not stuff they can teach at the academy. It's something you just got to roll the dice and hopefully you get lucky. So uh, thankfully, Deputy Corona here was no more than a couple hundred feet away from me. So it's always good when somebody else shows up soon. And, you know, you got a friend. So.